Correspondents Club of Japan. I'm Kenneth Kukier. I'm a director of the club and a journalist at The Economist. It is my great pleasure to introduce to the club Taro Kono. Many of you know him as an outspoken politician uh, with the LDP. Uh, he comes from a long and prestigious line of other uh, policymakers. His father, Yohei, uh, served, I guess he uh, was until 2009 with the handle of the government, the longest speaking, uh, longest serving speaker of the House. Uh, they, the two politicians sparred, sometimes openly in the diet. I can only imagine what it must have been like at the dinner table growing up. Uh, to show that more than just politics runs in the family and is thicker than blood, when Yohei uh, was struggling with, a, uh, with his ailment of hepatitis C, uh, Tao Kono exasperatedly told him that he had to accept a portion of his liver. After a 15-hour operation, Yohei told his diet colleagues, can you just imagine how more stubborn I'm going to be now that I have a portion of Taro's liver in me? <laughs> she said that. Yeah, it extends uh, even uh, deeper his grandfather, Ichiro, served in the Diet and was even imprisoned while he was trying to run because he was outspoken and pressed against the government at the time, headed by General Tojo. Himself, Taro has impressed uh, Japan, although not his LDP colleagues, by being uh, deeply critical of the Japanese political system, the way the government has been run, and all fact factions of the Japanese institutions of power uh, in the 20th century. Uh, he's most famously known, prior to, uh, to the disaster in March, of being an outspoken critic of nuclear energy and of what he is often said very baldly as the government is lying. Uh, he makes that point uh, in his speeches. He makes that point in his essays. Uh, it's duly ignored, but it came back again, uh, and I'm going to quote from a uh, confidential United States government State Department memo from 2008 in which at the time the Ambassador Schieffert noted that uh, in a private dinner that uh, Tao Kono, quote, accused Meki of covering up nuclear accidents and obscuring the true costs and problems associated with the nuclear industry. He also went on to say that the costs were overrun so much that in fact, quote, it would be cheaper to just buy a uranium mountain in Australia, unquote. And that's from WikiLeaks. Thank, thank them for that. With that as an introduction, I'd like to introduce you to and give the floor to Taro Kono to speak about uh, Japan, what ails it, uh, the LDP, what ails it, how he, you know, what his ideas are to bring it back. Taro Kono, thank you. have 15 more minutes in the morning. Um, thank you very much for inviting me over to this place. I think this is my fourth or fifth appearance in this Foreign Correspondence Club. And uh, I'm really getting sick and tired of uh, talking pessimistic about the future of Japan. And uh, two years ago, I said, oh, let, me, let me run. LDP, I could manage probably better than any, anyone else. But uh, I was ahead of the public opinion poll, and uh, I was seriously thinking who I should name Secretary General. <laughs> <laughs> I almost asked this person that would you be my Secretary General tomorrow, but uh, I didn't do that. Well, uh, when they opened up the ballot box, I didn't come in the first, so I was lucky I didn't do that. Um, I came to the parliament in 1996, and uh, you probably remember there was a Kyoto conference in uh, December 97 to talk about the global warming. And back then the Japanese government was talking about they would increase 20 more nuclear reactors so that they could uh, reduce the carbon dioxide emission. 
I set up a study group in my office and, and try to learn if that is feasible. And uh, it just doesn't make sense. The Japan's nuclear policy just don't make sense. And whenever I raise that issue, whenever I ask the question in the LDP meeting, they just simply said, are you communist? <laughs> and they never gave me a straightforward answer. Um, this May, I think it was May 5th, the person who has been calling me as a communist was interviewed in Asahi Shimbun, and he now suggests I should join the socialist. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going up from the communist party or going down from the communist party. But, uh, well, the core of the Japanese nuclear policy has always been a fast breeder reactor. Uh, back in 1967, uh, they were saying, the government was saying that fast breeder reactor will be there in 20 years. In the 70s, the government said the fast breeder reactor will be available in 30 years. And after 1995, when Monju had a severe accident, uh, the Monju is a pilot plant for the fast breeder reactor, got a leak of sodium. And now the government says officially. Uh, the fast breeder reactor will not be ready before 2050. And what would happen in 2050 is the fast breeder reactor will probably be available in 70 years and so on. So we're not going to have it, and we know it. And uh, Monju cost, I don't know, two, $200 million a year just to keep it going. And it hasn't really generated anything. And we, we just cannot pretend that the fast breeder reactor will be available soon. Another problem is we just cannot do anything with the nuclear waste. Um, by law, we have to reprocess every spent fuel we, we get. And uh, we have a lot of high radioactive uh, waste and we just cannot find a place where to dispose it. And the government is now officially saying we will decide by 2028 where to put their nuclear waste. And from 2038, we'll be start dumping it. Um, in order to decide where to, where to do it by 2028, we should have been finishing certain testing by now. And we haven't really done it. And we are probably 10 years behind the schedule. And the government still hasn't admitted that we are behind the schedule. Well, we have 17 more years before 2028. So we will uh, really decide before that. Sounds like the Japanese army during World War II. Anything is possible if you have mind to do it. And uh, by the end of the day, you just lose everything. And we have. 31 tons of plutonium now. Um, North Korea probably has 50 kilograms, and we have a six-party toss. And right next to North Korea, we have 31 tons of plutonium. We should have 6,000 party talks to decide what to do with this. And we've been saying we're going to burn this plutonium in the first breeder reactor, but a first breeder reactor is not going to be ready another 40 years at least, maybe longer. And we are building, well we have built, a reprocessing plant in Rokasho in Aomori Prefecture. And when it's running, the five tons of plutonium a year will come out on top of the 31 tons. What are we going to do with it? Um, we, we just can't do anything with it. And uh, TEPCO, there was a managing director of TEPCO visiting me seven years ago. And he, he told me, well, you are right. We have 31 tons of plutonium we just cannot burn. And it's crazy to add five tons every year to that. Uh, we fully understand it. But Kono-san, don't worry about it. This reprocessing plant in Rokasho, we're not going to be ready for a long time. It's going to have many problems, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing. But uh, that managing director, I cannot remember his name. Uh, maybe his name was Shimizu. I don't know. 